Question nine from our 2019 VCAA chemistry exam. We've got an unknown organic compound contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. We've got organic chemistry. It does not contain carbon to carbon double bonds. Its molecular ion peak has a ratio or mass charge ratio of that. So that's the molecular mass. Mass is that. And this CNMR contains three distinct peaks. So therefore we've got three times carbon NBC in this part here. A small peak on the mass spectrum can be identified at 75, which is one more than my molecular ion. This is, by definition, due to isotopes. Explain the presence of this peak. It is due to the carbon-13 isotope. Um, um, that What that means, basically, is you're going to have some carbons, and one of those carbons is going to be the carbon-13 isotope, which means that the... Um, yeah, you get one more weight um, or mass unit above it. So therefore, it's that. By definition, one extra mass unit above the molecular ion suggests the carbon-13 isotope. Now, if it was two above it, there might be a different isotope, such as like chlorine or something like that. But this one being one above it, carbon-13 is the go-to. Use the information provided to, combine, to find two possible molecular formulas for the compound. All right, so we've got 74 as our molar mass. Let's say it's got oxygen, it's got one oxygen. So I take away 16, and what will that give us? Um, that will give us, um, it's basically a trial and error here at the moment. So 74 take away 16 gives us 58. So if it's got 58, what carbons and hydrogens will give us with that? Um, let's say take away 36 between um, three carbons. That gives us 22, can't be 22, so let's take away another 12, gives us 10. So if there's take away um, 4 times 12 equals 10, so therefore it's going to be C4H10O. That's going to be one thing, and it's going to give us um, a particular molecular formula, C4H10O. Now let's pretend it has two, um, two oxygens. Take 74, we'll take away 32 if it has two oxygens. What's that going to leave us with? Um, 74, take away 32, gives me 42. Now let's say I've got 36, which is three carbons. These are going to six, so that's going to be a C3H6O2. That's going to give me um, another one, C3H6O2. So... They are two molecular formulas, which kind of makes sense. And this is just through trial and error. Saying I've got a certain molar mass, let's take away an oxygen and work out what ratio of carbon and hydrogen that's going to leave us with. Um, any more than that, any more oxygens than that, I think we're going to be a bit um, struggling at getting reasonable ratios. And we only need two, so that's all good. The hydrogen in a mass spectrum contains three sets of peaks and a peak ratio of three to one. What does the information tell you about the structure of the compound? It's molecular. So structure of the compound, molecular formula. Let's have a look at that. It's got three sets of peaks. So let's start off with that. Three peaks equals three hydrogen environments. That should definitely give us an answer. What does the ratio tell us? All right, the ratio says we have um, three H's and then two H's and one H, which equals six H's all together. So therefore, if I look at that, if I've got six hydrogens all together in this, it will either be six hydrogens all together or 12 hydrogens or any multiple of six, basically. But this is not going to be it. it. The molecular formula, therefore, is going to be C3H6O2. And again, that's just thinkfully looking at the logic of this particular thing. We need to talk about molecular formula. We need to talk about structure. I've talked about my peaks with this structure, okay? And I, now I need to talk about ratio in this question as well because it's been given to us. So that is my molecular formula. There are many possible structural isomers for this compound. Draw structural isomers below. So we're going to have three carbons. One, two, three. I've got two oxygens. So therefore, I'm going to have a double bond to O. Let's go with the carboxylic acid. That's a logical one. All right. Now, I need to make sure that we've got three carbon environments. One, two, three, because it says it up here. That's good. I've got three hydrogen environments. One, two, three. They're all unique. Life's good there. 
Now let's go on, normally I would have, um, if I've got carboxylic acids, I'm going to have esters. So let's go with esters. So let's go with a ester here. Um, and let's see what this gives me to a carbon here and that. Now this one doesn't make any sense. I've only got two hydrogen environments. I've got three carbon environments, but only two hydrogen environments. Can't be that ester. Let's go with another ester. Um, H to O to C to C here. Can't be, I already just did that one, didn't I? All right, let's go with this and put a H here and a H here. Alrighty, so let's go with this one here, which will be my um, methanoate ester. And let me just draw this in nicely here. Carbon. I've got three carbon environments. Tick. I've got one, two, three hydrogen environments. This is a good one as well. So that works. I can also probably get a ketone as well. So let's just look at what other ones I can get. I can get a double bond here and an OH. This is going to work for me. I think, is it? No, that's not going to work. I've only got, I guess, one, two, three hydrogen environments, three carbon environments. I could probably also do um, OH there, like this as well. No, I couldn't do this one. It's got four hydrogen environments. Can't do that one. Because I need to make sure it fits with both the hydrogen MR spectrum and the carbon MR spectrum, both having three distinct peaks. So therefore that one that I just drew out didn't work. But anyway, I've got three good um, possible isomers. So that's nice. I'm gonna move on to my next question. Here is my infrared compound below. I've got two peaks, I need to identify them. Now this one here, straight away, I'm gonna say it's the C double bond to O um, thing here. Identify the functional groups responsible for it. So yes, that makes sense there. And this guy here is going to be an OH there because it's definitely a distinctive bond in there. Now, interestingly, this guy here goes down and it doesn't cross over my thing here. So therefore it's gonna be an alcohol. It's an OH alcohol functional group. And this guy here sits in at uh, 1500, 1600, 1700. It's just above that. So I'm gonna go to my data booklet to see if I can actually get the functional group. Because this is a bond, it's not necessarily a functional group. Let's have a look at what my thing says for this. Because this is an alcohol, this cannot be a carboxyl. So what is it going to look at? It sits here as an aldehyde or it sits here as a ketone. It's relatively high on that. So I'm going to say that's going to be a ketone. Ketone. Again, this can't be an acid. It looks kind of like an acid, but this OH is an OH alcohol. A OH um, acid will kind of look like this, and it'll, that um, alcohol absorption will really encompass most of this um, C to H bond here as well. So therefore, it's quite tricky. It is not a carboxyl um, functional group. So using the HNMR, and the IR, draw the structure of the compound. Well, I know I've got three carbons, okay? I know I've got a, um, a hydroxyl, and let's just put in these guys. And then I've got my ketone. Now that therefore, if I go back here and look at what I've got, I had it here, I think it was, with one, two, three. That ketone is gonna be here. And I'm gonna end up with three carbons here. And I think that should be my particular molecule because I've got three hydrogen environments in a ratio of one. So in ratio of three to two to one, I've got my OH alcohol. I've got my ketone double bond to O here. That's good there. I've got my three peaks. I reckon that's my molecule done and dusted. And that, my friends, is question eight. This was this is quite tricky because this here, this looks like it looks like a C double OH, but when you look at it a bit closely, this is going to be your alcohol functional group, and yeah, it's quite tricky. So therefore, that's our answer. But that's question eight done and dusted. Um, on to question nine next.